At this point, deputies are still working to capture these men, but this couple had just stopped at the gas station on their way back home from church. Well, the good news is that little seven-year-old boy is okay. Meanwhile, his father, Richard Hill Jr., is expected to face a judge today. This morning, repairs are underway to Halifax Hospital. Extra security is patrolling around outside, and an autopsy report is underway. All of this, of course, following a frightening Sunday morning for patients and staff. During testimony, that young boy told jurors about being repeatedly starved and punished. He said his parents even gave him a lump of coal for Christmas. Now, if Wilkerson does postpone, she is required to stay on her medication as well as within Volusia County limits. Genuinely <laughs> excited about this, right? I am. I'm a big nerd. I was just about to tell John, you know what? No fake sticks. I am not ashamed to say that my brother a few years ago actually got me a wand <laughs> for girl. my Christmas that gift. Girl. How cool is that art that you can actually see know, what it's yeah. going so to. real? I was so amazed when yeah. I was yeah. I'm so excited. I am too. <laughs> We're now one day away from the final gubernatorial debate for this upcoming election. This is still a very active crime scene. Take a look right now. It happened at the intersection of Delaware Brussport Avenue. Take a look. You can see the situation unfolding right now from Sky Fox. Police and troopers are actually on scene. Police are not saying who died in this crash yet. All we know is that it happened around 1 this morning. The end of the search coming when a concerned citizen spotted a shirtless man running awkwardly with his hands in front of him. Of course, that was because he was still wearing his handcuffs. Now, investigators found him near the railroad tracks in Edgewater. He is now also charged, guys, with battery on a law enforcement officer and, of course, for escaping. This is not the first time we've seen a young child impacted by this type of shooting. No, Ryan, it's not. Unfortunately, it seems I've been reporting on multiple drive-bys involving children as of late. A couple of weeks ago, I reported on a young boy who was hit in the torso. This time, it's a young girl that was shot in the back in a popka. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning, John and Amy. Well, that father is currently charged with child neglect. The Department of Children and Families now also involved. This is Richard Hill Jr. He was arrested by the state fire marshal's office on Sunday while walking back home from an IHOP in Coco. Firefighters say the fire broke out inside his home while his seven-year-old son was sleeping yesterday. We're told once the seven-year-old woke up, he ran nearly half a mile down the street looking for help. A deputy picked up the boy at a kangaroo express gas station, but by the time they got the fire out, the house was already destroyed. Firefighters believe a candle in the boy's bedroom started this fire. They say it's a reminder to never leave any flammable items on and unattended. Firefighters also say the house did not have any working electricity. Hill's son is now staying with another family member. John. Good morning, John and Amy. Now that early voting has officially kicked off, the candidates are running out of time to persuade the voters. We're now one day away from the final gubernatorial debate for this upcoming election. The latest poll numbers indicating that Democratic candidate Charlie Crist is now pulling into the lead. Now, following Fangate, Crist is now polling at 45% among voters compared to Scott at 43. That's according to the St. Pete polls. The percentage is small, but prior to Fangate, Gate, the latest St. Pete poll indicated Scott had the lead. With little time to spare, both candidates will be rallying throughout the state today with Central Florida events on the schedule as well. Right now, Governor Rick Scott is rallying with campaign supporters at Huey Tide Harry's off of Semron Boulevard. Meanwhile, the Charlie Chris campaign will be holding early voting rallies in Miami this morning. Then tonight, Chris supporters are gathering at the Winter Park Field office here in Central Florida. They're going to walk to the library to cast early votes. And we are encouraging people to get out and exercise that precious right to vote. It's so important. And, uh, you know, if everybody votes, we'll have a good result. Now, remember, the very last debate will be held in Jacksonville tomorrow. Of course, we will have an entire recap. For details on early voting locations, visit your Supervisor of Elections website. We'll keep you updated, but for right now, back to you, John and Amy. Thanks, Melissa. Also, in the newsroom, she's been tracking the latest on this. Good morning, Melissa.
Good morning, Ryan Andrea. Such an unfortunate story. Let's start with an update on that little girl's condition. Well, as of last check, she was in serious but stable condition right now at the hospital. Detectives are still working to gather information right now as well. What we know is that around one Sunday morning, more than two dozen shots were fired into an Apopka home in a drive-by shooting. The 11-year-old was hit in the back with at least one bullet. She was taken to Florida Hospital, then transferred to Arnold Palmer, where she still is now, the horrifying act woke up several residents in the neighborhood as well. I heard the shooting sound like it was flying all in the trees and it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. It's making worse and worse and worse and worse every day. It don't make no sense. Now, there is very little information on any leads as there is no suspect or vehicle information at this time. If you have any information that would be helpful, please contact the Orlando Sheriff's Department immediately. For right now, I'll send on back to you at the desk. Lisa. Good morning. Well, the elderly couple was on their way home from church when it happened. It's a scary ordeal, but they proved to be tougher than the bad guys thought. Take a look. This is one of the men who deputies say tried to rob an elderly couple at this kangaroo gas station off of Highway 441 in Ocala yesterday. It happened around noon. This image is captured by surveillance video from that store. Now, deputies say the men beat the elderly man and tried to grab the woman's purse as she was walking out of the door, but she held on to it and she did not let go. Now these Good Samaritans chased the man as they ran from the store. You saw the first suspect in the surveillance video. The second suspect is described as about 180 pounds and around 5'8". Anyone with information is urged to call Crime Stoppers immediately. John and Amy? Absolutely is, Luann. Good morning. Today the father of that young boy is expected to actually take a plea deal. Now during testimony, that young boy told jurors about being repeatedly starved and punished. He said his parents even gave him a lump of coal for Christmas. Take a look. This is the boy's father, Michael Marshall. Marshall was arrested in March of 2012 and charged with eight counts of felony child abuse. The boy told jurors when he was punished, he was locked in a bathroom for days, if not weeks at a time. The bathroom window was boarded up and the doorknob lock keyed. When officials discovered the alleged abuse, the then 12 year old boy weighed only 40 pounds and stood just four feet, four inches tall. Now, the average 12 year old weighs around 75 to 100 pounds and is approximately five feet tall. Last month, we reported on the trial of Sharon Glass, Marshall's girlfriend, who was also arrested on those felony child abuse charges. Glass has been convicted on all eight counts of abuse. Listen in to prior testimony where that little boy told jurors that at times he was so desperate for food, he'd resort to eating toothpaste just to stay alive. I put it on my teeth and I ate it. Why'd you eat the toothpaste? Because I thought that it would somewhat satisfy my hunger. Now, Glass faces up to 140 years in prison. Marshall will meet with the judge at 115 this afternoon. We will be in court with the details.